Hey, internet friends, cousins, and scoundrels. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Pull up a chair, honey, and let's have a chat. And since the algorithm really likes it when you interact with the content, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe since you're here. And I ain't gonna hold you. Let's get right into this. Y'all, let me tell you, <laughs> this was the funniest and most entertaining episode of LAMH that we've had in a long time, okay? When I say I was on the floor laughing, I mean hollering, like, look, like I was hollering like Tisha was when Martel was dropping them bombs on top of her head, okay? Ciao. It was bomb after bomb, back to back, and baby, nobody was safe. When I tell you nobody was safe, it was scorched earth out there at that park <laughs> listen carlos king must have been handing out pips on these folks because when i say they showed up for work on this episode yes ma'am they did okay <laughs> let's not pretend like this shit was giving very old news very stale uh tired dry storylines it really was um it was giving very much so eating off of mel and martell's old tired story look Listen, Mel clocked out. She said, I'm on PTO. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let y'all say and do some strange things for this change. I'm clocking out this episode. I'm going to help run these storylines, right? I'm going to help run this tea, but I'm not going to do anything other than that. I'm going to let y'all tell y'all own stories this year. And I'm here for it because these fuckers got shit to talk about too, okay? So let's get straight into it. This is the battle of the bust downs. Baby, this is round one. Marceau, Martel, and Tisha, okay? Y'all, when Martel said Tisha was out here getting trains run on her, I almost fell off my couch. Listen, instead of denying it, right, like a normal person would, Tisha went and confirmed it. You after me. Hey, you're smoking me. crack. Hey, you know she hey, too, right? You after me. Yeah, that wasn't hey. common. Hey. <laughs> and I saw it in person. <laughs> she really just hit us with that. Yeah, that was back in college. Like that was supposed to make it cute. Ma'am, what? No, you should have played dumb, acted offended, or at least hit us with that. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Tisha, your husband was already sitting there looking like his soul left his body and you just handed Martell the win. Y'all, when I tell you Tisha looked like she was about to pass the fuck out, I mean, baby girl was fanning herself so hard, I thought she was going to take flight. I did. And then Martell, the king of petty, decided to throw some more gasoline on his fire. This man really said, I could have hit it too, but nah, I'm good on this. I didn't want it. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> Martel said he was there, as in in the room when Tisha was out here circuit jerking the team. Yes, y'all. Martel said he was in there when she was loving the crew. Y'all, I had to pause the episode because I was laughing too hard to focus. Do you understand? Okay, I was laughing too hard to hear what was even being said. I had to rewind that joint several times, right? But I'm going to tell you something. I got to ask you, who feels bad for Tisha? Because I the fuck don't. I don't. She asked him to do that, right? She said, say what you know. Tell everybody what you got. Did she not? So they both got what they asked for. Marceau and Tisha dared Martel to tell it. And he did. And I don't feel bad for either of them. Now let's talk about Dusty, okay? This bitch is a setup queen. Okay, she's a backdoor queen. If I ain't never seen one, she would get somebody taken up out of here. She would, because she don't give a shit about nobody but herself. She is out for self. And I'll talk about her in a separate video, but let's talk about her reaction to this revelation, shall we? It was gold. It was gold. She was sitting there unbothered as hell, probably thinking of some most stupid ass questions to ask until Martell hit them with that name drop. Mm -hmm. that's when her whole face switched up homegirl was shocked look at her she's shocked as shit now why would the name hit her so hard hmm because it's clearly somebody still in their circle right somebody they still see at brunches and barbecues baby showers this person though is just not on the show but clearly they are still in this friend group 
Dusty didn't go to college with them. So if she's shocked, it's gotta be somebody relevant to the friend circle today. This man was a part of the A&M Underground Railroad, okay? And Tisha was the conductor. Now clock that T. And Tisha, girl, this shit is beyond embarrassing. Everybody was fucking on you. The whole crew, you slobbing down the whole block. Bitch, you was a blockhead? So let's get into it, okay? Tisha knows she was a hoe back in the day, right? And honestly, that explains a lot. Look, okay, let's break it down. Tisha is from Bessemer, okay? A small town where, let's keep it real, she probably wasn't really catching any eyes, right? Not because she's ugly, because she's not, but because competition was probably tight and she's playing from the bottom of the deck, okay? She grew up in the projects, so she's already dealing with a class divide, okay? Number two, there's a speech impediment, and the fact that she doesn't appear to be very smart. She can't spell and half the time she doesn't seem to know what the fuck she's talking about. So there's that. And let's get into number three, right? I'm going there because I know feathers will be ruffled when I say this. But she's dark skinned. Okay. Now don't get it twisted. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Right. But Tisha herself clearly internalized some of that colorism. She even admitted it on season one or two. And she said that she hated hearing people say that she was pretty for a dark skinned girl. Add to the fact that Marceau was always talking about she was, um, you know, from the other side of the tracks. And baby is clear that Tisha came to A&M with baggage and self-esteem issues. Can we be honest about that? Now picture this. A small town girl with low self-esteem suddenly gets to college and boom. For the first time, guys are noticing her, calling her pretty, and giving her the kind of validation she's never had, right? What do you think she did with all that newfound attention? Hmm. Baby, she got ran through like a toll booth at rush hour. Yes, she did. It was open season, right? Everybody got a turn. She was out here hunting out the goods like Oprah. You get a piece of pussy. You get a piece of pussy. You get some sloppy toppy, okay? Can, can we talk about it like adults? And let's be clear, these weren't the top tier dudes. We're not talking about the jocks or the campus stars. No, these were the Marceau types, the average, invisible, fat and ugly dudes, right? That's what Martel said. Tisha got the bottom of the barrel. Hell, Marceau has since glowed up into what he calls medium ugly. And instead of being fat, he's got hips and thighs now, shit. So yeah, Tisha's past. Well, that's not exactly a mystery anymore, now is it? She showed up at A&M with low self-esteem and a hunger for validation. And when she got some attention, she laid it low and spread it wide. And that's the backstory, y'all. That's it. That's it. That's all. And now she's married, right? And that title means everything to her, right? So let's unpack that because I think the code just got cracked, okay? It's alleged that Tisha and Marcel's whole marriage started off as a shotgun wedding due to her being pregnant, right? That's the rumor. That's the tea. You heard that right. But the gag is the fact that he even married her, bottom of the barrel or not, at all, right? Because let's be clear, based on the conversation at that park, Tisha was the college pass around, right? Everybody saw her pocketbook, everybody, and all the homies got a turn except for Martel and Maurice. Shit, that's the math. That's what they put out there, okay? That's the math. Now, let's talk about why she really hates Mel, okay? Sure, they've had their issues and their drama, right? But deep down, it's pure jealousy, okay? See, Mel, just like Tisha, also came from a small town. But that's where the similarities stop, right? Mel had the trifecta. Number one, Mel came from a middle-class home. She wasn't dragging the baggage of being project-born like Tisha, okay? Number two, she speaks well, right? Mel doesn't trip over her words or give off struggle sentences. She's educated and it shows. And three, she's conventionally attractive. Mel is pretty. And more importantly, she's used to being pretty, right? Compliments don't face her because she's had them her whole life. 
And let's not sugarcoat it. Colorism plays a role here too, okay? Mel is light skin, which is undeniably valued higher in this community. Don't argue with me, argue with your balding tires. This isn't the focus of this video. And again, Tisha herself brought this up in season one or two when she said she hated being told she was pretty for a dark skinned girl, okay? So when Mel got to campus, she wasn't out there busting it wide for attention. She didn't have to. Mel was used to being noticed. She came from stability. She was secure and she had options. Meanwhile, Tisha, And now that this is out in the open, it makes so much sense why she works overtime trying to convince herself and the audience that Mel is a hoe. It's projection. Tisha's the one with the actual track record and that shit eats her ass up alive, okay? That also explains why Tisha puts the title of wife on such a high pedestal. To her, it's the ultimate badge of honor. It's a title she thought she'd never earn. I say I was married now. You know the saying, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife? Well, Marceau did just that. And let's be real, Tisha didn't even expect it, right? That hoe is still in shock. That wife title to her just isn't about love or, or commitment. Hell no, it's about elevating her social position. It's the reason why she lets that man cheat in peace. It's her way of saying, fuck it. Look at me now. It's the ultimate glow up. But underneath all that, she knows what's up. So does the streets. And apparently, so does Martel. And since y'all bitches have decided to cross him out, he's got his foot on y'all's neck and he ain't letting it up. And guess what? I'm here for all of it. You hoes can tear each other up. I promise I won't shed one tear. That shit's overdue anyway. Mm -mm. So, how are y'all feeling about finding out that Tisha was actually the hoe she's been accusing Mel of being? Hmm? Because baby, this plot twist was wild, but also to me, not too surprising, right? Like the math has been mathing for a while now, and we all suspected that these hoes were swapping sheets, swapping spit, swapping fluids for a minute now, right? We knew some shit was going down, that the secrets was too thick, right? But when Martel came through to confirm what a lot of us have already suspected, baby, it was the hypocrisy for me, okay? Tisha has been working overtime trying to throw dirt on Mel's name. Meanwhile, this bitch has got a whole track record out here. Ho, if you don't shut your ass up. Drop down in the comments and let me know what you guys think about Tisha, Marceau, and Martel and this little revelation between these three. Again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time. Bet you know now.